Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. In this video we will talk about separators. So they are one of the few remaining types of entities I have never talked about before and they are here. So they are here to visually separate rooms in a dungeon or even in some other kind of maps. but. The main issue they want to address is that by default when you make a dungeon like this with several room rooms on the same map, when you are in a room you can see the other adjacent rooms, which is different from the Zelda Link to the Past behavior. And actually it is the case in my games, in my existing games so far. Not all of them actually. Zelda Mystery of Solaris DX and XD. For two reasons. The first one is that uh, my games didn't really have um, such um, this kind of regular rooms, rectangular rooms, all the same size. Rooms were usually much more complicated. And all the second reason is that separators didn't exist in Solaris at that time. So it's very very easy to do. Add separator and boom. So you can separate horizontally or vertically. <coughs> like this. And now the camera is is blocked by separators. And when you touch a separator with the hero, the camera is automatically scrolled to the next room. Okay, um, notice that enemies are not um, are completely independent from separators. It's still all the same map. So this enemy starts um, going towards the hero even when he's not in the same room. And this kind of issue will be addressed with an advanced script that we will see in another tutorial. Um, and also we will be able to regenerate enemies when we come back to a, to a room where, where it was already killed before. We will also be able to regenerate um, pots and even blocks if you want. But this is um, out of the topic of this tutorial. Here I just want to show the basic feature of separators. Okay, um, notice that even though the separators have a thickness of 16 pixels in the, in the quest editor, this is only uh, for practical reasons to be able to, <laughs> to select them and to move them in the quest editor because in the game they act like their thickness was actually zero. It's just, I mean, it's the it's the center of the separator that um, makes the real separation. Okay, when you are in this room, you can see 16 pixels here, and in the other room, 16 pixels here. Sixteen pixels. It's like this. So actually, don't forget to put. If you have. Um, a space of 16 pixels here between the border of the room and, and the border of the map. It means that you need 32 pixels between each room to have correct separators. 16 pixels for one side and 16 pixels for the other side. Okay. And so what happens if we try to merge these two rooms?
so it still works we just scroll but remember that enemies are not taken care of so separators are automatically obstacles for enemies so we can see it, him but he's actually stuck trying to go towards me but this is not enough really because we could kill him from there okay I just killed him <laughs> so it's very strange but again this problem will be addressed in a more advanced tutorial we'll be able to automatically um, disable enemies that are not in the same room but anyway um, you you could pr we would probably want to put the separator like this if this room two, two rooms are merged you make uh, a T with the separators like that and this works perfectly Okay, now the camera normally scrolls in the room. It stops on the separator on the right here. And it stops on the border of the map here. <coughs> okay. Um, when you do s you separators like this, with a T shape, um, always take care of not putting the the door too close to the T to the intersection of the T because at this point the camera is centered here but as soon as you scroll it will move instantly to here because the constraint um, disappeared the separator constraint So it looks very bad. Okay, you can see that it's even worse in, in this direction when going to the south. We can see during the scrolling you can see part of the of this room here. So there is no possible solution to this problem. Oops. Except that you have to take care of where you put your doors if you keep them centered you have no problem and if you put them on this side no problem either because this separator still exists uh, on the other side so no problem here Okay, let's restore the door here. And by the way, how how did I? Uh, it's not really related, but to this uh, to separators. But um, it's a common problem when you want to select tiles here without selecting the floor. You maybe you are used to move the floor first and select your tiles, but actually you can. When nothing is selected at all, you can press Ctrl or Shift and and start your your rectangle. And the point where you click first will not you will not select anything. So okay, if you didn't know that, it's a <laughs> very useful trick. And then you can move your door. Okay, let's keep it centered. So that's all for separators. Um, maybe I can show you very quickly the documentation of the separators. There are two events, one called just at the beginning of the scrolling and the other at the end of the scrolling when a separator is being activated and after it was activated. So this can be used actually by the, the script I was talking about. Um, the script you will see later in a, in a more advanced tutorial about regenerating enemies that I mean disabling disabling enemies that are not in the same room and regenerating them when you come back same thing for uh, pots 
Okay. So that's all for the basic usage of separators. I think they they will be very useful. Maybe you you already figured figured out by by yourself how to use them. But uh, yeah, see you next time for the next video. Bye.